If you're into classic American muscle cars, and especially Mopars, I think I may have stumbled across one of the rarest, coolest of them all. It's this right here, 1971 Hemi Cuda. All right, so a 71 Hemi Cuda in and of itself is a pretty rare, desirable, and exotic car. In fact, a 71 Hemi Cuda convertible sold for four and a half million dollars a couple of years ago. So it's right there at the top of the heap. But this particular one, because of its story, I think beats that. So here's the deal. I'm going through Facebook and I'm in a group called Factory 426 Hemi Cars, no clones. And by, by the way, I'm totally okay with clones. I, I think clones are a good thing as long as they're done right. You can have fun with a clone. The real thing, you gotta always be careful. You're a caretaker, a clone, you can beat up and have fun with. Besides the point, okay? So I'm going through this group and I come across this post by a fellow named Scott Lindsay. This is from August 23rd, 2018. So Scott goes on to say that he bought his first Hemi car, he actually bought two cars, out of a backyard in Oklahoma City. He lived right in the area. And one of the cars was a regular, like a Belvedere or a Coronet, one of those. But the other one was this 71 Hemi Cuda. Now, what makes this car so rare and so special, and this is, this is the way he found this thing, sitting in the backyard, complete car, everything is on it. Interior was all there too. The unique thing about this car is that it was never actually intended to be a car. It was never t titled, it was never sold. It was built by Chrysler as a parts car, as a donor car for a body in white. So I'll explain, you know, it didn't even have a certificate of origin, it just came with an invoice saying, here's a car, right? All right, so I'll explain what the whole body and weight thing is. And it wasn't just Chrysler, other manufacturers did this too, but Chrysler seemed to like really have a, a, a thing for it. So if you had a, 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 a deal, a factory deal back in the day, late 60s, early 70s, Chrysler would give you what they called a body in white. So what the body in white was is the basic structure of the car. It's the floor, the quarters, the roof, the firewall, frame rails, the structure of the car. And then that's it. They would take, once a car reached that point of completion on the assembly line, they'd pull it off on the side, and that was your body in white. And this is what they supplied the racer. And they did this because if you're going to build a car, you don't need to strip a whole car down to get what you need. You know, strip the interior and the wiring, and of course there's all the sound deadener and insulation, which all adds up weight-wise. So it saved the racer a lot of time and a lot of work to build the car from that point. And what Chrysler also did was supply a donor car. So they would give you the same model, in this case it was a Barracuda, Hemi Cuda, where you could pull your motor, your trans, your rear, suspension, any drivetrain parts that you might need that you could use. It all came from your donor car. And this was a common deal. This was Richard Petty got it for the NASCAR cars and Sox and Martin and all of the Dick Landy, all of the factory, factory racers of the day got body and white cars. And this was the standard procedure. So, this was done in 1971, which was like towards the end of that whole body and white era. And it was for a pro stock racer named Don Gravier. And he ran out of Oklahoma, pro stock. And because of the nature of the car, he didn't need all that much from the donor. Because a pro stock car of the day had steel roof and quarter panels, but fiberglass doors, fiberglass front fenders, the hood, bumpers, all that stuff was aftermarket, it was all fiberglass. So when they sent him this donor car, all he really needed was the motor, the trains, the rear, and the K-frame. Everything else just got discarded, pushed off to the side. And that's where this fellow found it. So, tracking the history of the car, it ended up uh, with a guy named Rick Simpson. And Rick did a full restoration on this car, and that's how it appears today. Now, aside from the fact that this was never intended to be sold, never intended to be you know, used as anything but a parts car. It's a bare, bare stripper. It's probably the only Hemi Cuda that I know of that's as stripped as this thing is. It has just the regular non-rally dashboard in it. You see it's got just chrome bumpers. These cars, 71 Cudas, especially Hemi Cudas, are known for like their over-the-top, you know, the, the stuff, the elastomeric bumpers and billboard stripes and louvers and crazy paint and everything else. Well, this thing here had regular plain steel wheels, the 15 by 7 
rally wheels, those are an extra cost option. So if you didn't order anything, that's what you got. You got the steel wheels and the dog dish hubcaps. It's got regular plain bumpers on it, plain white car. Like literally, it's, it's the minimum Hemi Cuda, which is like in and of itself an extremely rare thing. But the fact that the car was never intended to exist, never intended to be anything but a parts car, I think that the fact that it exists today, it's intact, it's been restored. I, I'm now going to be, I'm going to be more part nitpicker, nitpicker. Okay, it's got, it's got the wrong hubcaps. It's got dog dish hubcaps. But 71, it should say Plymouth Division on them, and these are the 72 and later plain caps, right? I know, I, I, I hate when people do that, but I can't help it. So that's it. In my opinion, that is probably the neatest, rarest. Mopar ex in existence today. I've come across plenty of actual body and white cars over the course of my life. It's not that unusual to find a car or an old race car after it's been built, after it's been done, and it originated as a body and white. And that's the other thing too, on the, the, the fender tag, the data tag for the Chrysler products, where they list all of the options that are on a car and, and you know the VIN number and all that. Well, with a body in white, all it says is just body in white, just those three words stamped into the tag. So I've come across numerous body and white cars, but I've never come across a survivor donor car. And it's probably just due to the fact that towards the end of this body and white program, really none of these parts were usable. By that time, pro stockers had gone to beyond just, you know, regular cars. They were real race cars, race cars. So all of the street equipment, the steel doors, the steel fenders, the steel hood, the original grill, the original bumpers, none of that stuff was usable on this car, and so it all stayed in place. So that's the story with that car, really neat stuff. If you know of any other Survivor cars like this, where it wasn't supposed it was a parts car for a body and white or something along those lines, I'd like to know about it in the comments. So if you, you, know, you get the story or you have a picture or whatever, pop it in there. If, it, if, it's, if it's accessible, we'd love to do a feature on it. And also, while we're at it, look, we have our new shirts. These things are in the store now. You know, we print them ourselves, right? Forget Teespring, the craziness with the Teespring. We print them ourselves. So there's our new shirt. It's in the stores now. We've got a few new designs coming. So go ahead and buy merch. And if you buy enough of it, I can actually go pick this car up because I'd like this one and a few I'd really like to have for myself, right? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.